Hello everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, let's talk about what the 16 personalities look like when they are drunk. And okay, let's talk about, first of all, how alcohol influences our mind and our thought processes and why people choose to drink alcohol in the first place. Okay, so number one, alcohol can influence things like your ability to self-regulate your own emotions and so it can make you act more expressively and more on your instincts and how you feel. People tend to feel them more loose, more spontaneous and less inhibited than they normally are. As the part of their brain that parents themselves and tells themselves don't do that, don't talk like that, don't look like that, is going to be a lot quieter. It's going to struggle to work and keep back personal impulses. Beyond that, alcohol tends to be associated with the worst in memory, meaning, you know, you will have less consequences to remember the next day, meaning that uh, it will be more difficult for you to recall what happened the day before. And alcohol can also influence, uh, for example, your responses, sensory processing and so on. So, for example, something I see is a lot of highly sensitive people use alcohol to self-medicate in the sense of like numbing their senses so they will become less overwhelmed. So imagine that parties for you are very sensory stimulating and very overwhelming. If you still want to force yourself to go through these kind of experiences and to try to enjoy them as much as you can, for example, a lot of people use alcohol as a way to numb their senses so that they experience less of their own sensitivity and can turn off their senses a lot. This also influences things like motor coordination, making us more clumsy and things like that too, right? So now, how does that affect the 16 personalities? Well, something you'll see is in general, when you drink, what tends to happen is, well, many things can happen, but on average, you'll see that people become less inhibited. So in general, a person that is extremely self-controlled and typically has a very strong judging preference and a person that's very industrious and very serious, will become more spontaneous and will let loose more. So it influences our capacity to engage in childlike play, right? Because in many cultures today that are especially very industrious, like Sweden and others, one something you'll see is basically uh, people don't allow themselves to play and to be childlike and carefree and to just do silly things because cultural pressure to be controlled and serious and professional is so strong but with alcohol people have an excuse to let loose which means that a lot of the time people drink in order to feel permitted to be able to express themselves and so what you'll see is most people that drink become more playful meaning that their tendency towards self-regulation and judging and perhaps introversion become decreased and their capacity to be outgoing to be social and to be playful and adaptable increase. And so people become more extroverted and more perceiving. And this is something that you see across the board as all types seem to gravitate towards this more extroverted and more adaptable state of mind. But something else also happens because alcohol is mainly a numbing drug, which means that in general, alcohol tends to turn off and lower the volume on most of your personality traits, which means that in general, people that are more intuitive tend to become less intuitive, people that are more feeling tend to become less feeling, people that are more thinking tend to become less thinking, simply because those cognitive processes struggle to work and function effectively under the influence of alcohol. So in some ways you could say alcohol is a way for us to return to a more primitive state of mind where our functions and our cognitive, <laughs> cognitive traits are less developed. So in some ways you could say that there is a part of people that seek to return to a more primitive state of mind. So in some ways, we, what we'll see is people tend to use alcohol in order to shut off their mind if they have an overactive mind, to sh like manage excessive anxiety, to manage stress, to deal with negative emotions and to turn off the volume on your brain if you find your brain is too much and like there's too much going on in your life. It's also a representation of people's desire to return to a more primitive state of mind, you know, a desire to return to the cave, a desire to, you know, be less adult-like, to be less civilized, to be less controlled, to be less organized, to be less professional, to be less serious. I see a lot of primarily introverts rely on 
alcohol as a social lubricant in a sense to get them to open up more. But I also see people that are more shy, like shy extroverts doing the same thing. And I also see that it's something that can be extremely addictive because it can become something that you need in every single situation, right? So it can basically get to a point where you feel like you need to drink alcohol in every single social situation simply because you feel that the normal you, the less alcoholized version of you, is too boring, is too shy, is too introverted, is not socially acceptable. And so the feeling is, I need alcohol in order to be able to function and to mask and in order to fit in with other people. And so we can understand why alcohol has become so popular in so many cultures as so many people seek this desire to fit in, this desire to not uh, be anxious, the desire to not worry so much and the desire to shut off and turn off your brain sometimes. Considering all the damages of alcohol and all the problems caused by alcohol, we might want to look at and consider other alternatives for ourselves in order to avoid these kind of problems. And so questions revolve around like, how can I make sure that I'm allowed to express myself and be myself without alcohol? How can I make sure that I have fun at parties and events without the use of alcohol? And if I'm highly sensitive and if I get sensory stimulation very easily, what can I do to make sure I don't get overwhelmed in these kind of activities without the use of alcohol or drugs as a crutch, right? So here what you might want to think of is things like like reaffirming yourself, like telling yourself that you're okay just the way you are and allowing yourself to be quiet in social settings, allowing yourself to not necessarily speak out unless you want to, allowing yourself to be weird or awkward sometimes because we all are awkward sometimes and to realize that it's not so bad. It's okay to be a little bit uh, stiff. It's okay to be a little bit controlled. It's a bit it's okay to be a stumble and be a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning, but it will get a lot easier if you allow yourself to feel comfortable being that way and to allow that state in yourself. And recognizing that once you feel more comfortable being yourself, it's going to be a lot easier for you to be more silly, to let loose, to do silly things, to accept and to say weird things without the need for alcohol or without the need for drugs to become an excuse for that, right? Because a lot of the time when people think they are drunk, they act drunk, even if they're not drunk. And so it's not necessarily the state of drunkenness that people are looking for. It's the state of playfulness. It's the state of being childlike. Because even as adults, we want to be childish. We want to say silly things. We want to dance. We don't want to be a little bit weird. We want to... <laughs> going for a run, <laughs> do not interrupt, it's cute. We want to be childlike, <laughs> we want to do silly things. And we want to be able to just let loose without the need of alcohol. And so I have been a non-drinker for most of my life. I'll drink socially in a sense that I'll have one beer and that's basically good enough for me. But for the most part, I don't need drugs, I don't need alcohol. I seek to experience those states of high and of fun and of ecstasy and of joy without the use of any alcohol or without any use of drugs. And I use meditation, music, and I use uh, meditation and mindfulness to experience these kind of states. And I allow myself to have the confidence to say silly things, to be weird, to do different things, and to be a little bit odd because I know if I can do that, I can give other people the permission to do the same. And when I am like that, I make other people feel encouraged to be like that as well. Because people see me do these things. And first they go, oh, that's kind of weird. But at the same time, they feel so relieved to not be the weirdest person in the room because I'm the weirdest person in the room. And now anything they do will just be a little bit weird and not as weird. So in a sense, that's kind of what I hope uh, that in the future people can find a way to be weird without the use of alcohol. But there are bigger questions here to talk about, like why people feel such a need to turn off their minds, why people feel they can't be themselves anymore, why people feel so controlled, why people feel that the social pressures around them have gotten so strong that they can't 
be themselves anymore and why we become increasingly drug dependent as a civilization. I see the use of drugs increase all over. And yes, certain people are ditching alcohol, like young people are drinking less than before and so on. But most people seem to engage in a lot of escapism these days in different forms. And so what can we do about that? And so in a sense, I have nothing against when people experiment and try out different things because, hey, we got to be allowed to try different things. And that's completely fine. But I, what I am against is a culture which doesn't allow people to be themselves without the use of alcohol or drugs or things like that, right? Because that's the bigger problem. That's what creates this culture of dependency on different forms of drugs and motivators. The truth is, most of the time we don't need these things because we have an infinite amount of energy and passion and joy inside of us if we know where to find it. At least that's what I think. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.